Um, I thought that was coffee in that cup. Is that actually a frothy beer? Uh, it, one cup of each. Because I thought the bar here closed at 11. Oh, well. If you know the right people, it's always open. Well, they can, smug, they can smuggle something in for it, into a European can summit. I, can I quote Jean-Claude Juncker and say, where there's a will, there's a deal? Beer? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, welcome, welcome to, to Brexit. Welcome cast. to Brussels and welcome to Brexit Cast live for once. Brexit Cast. Brexit Cast. From the BBC. No one's got a f- clue what Brexit is. Brexit is. Uh... I hadn't quite understood the full extent of this. We're particularly reliant on the Dover Calais crossing. I met the, uh, Boris Johnson once. The doubters, the doomsters, the gloomsters, they are going to get it wrong. Again. Remainers and leavers, that's going to end well. A process which I cannot describe as a dog's Brexit. Hello, it's Adam Fleming, and I'm going to say it again, live in Brussels at the EU summit. And Laura next to you. And Katya next to you. It's nice to be together. Yes, apart from the fact Chris Mason is in Reading getting ready to do any questions tomorrow on Radio 4. Which is um, very exciting. It is exciting. But we're, we're rooting him. for him. So yeah. that was, that's the slightly disappointing news, but there's been quite exciting news today as well, hasn't there? A revised Brexit deal now exists on paper. Yeah, there's a deal. There is a deal. Which there in, is a deal. Yeah, and in and of itself, there's a big moment, whether you love the idea of leaving the EU or whether you hate the idea of leaving the EU, there is a new deal. And I have to put in a butt there, don't I? Because I think we've got <laughs> so jaded and cynical that I just feel the urge to say, we've had a deal before, yep. about a year ago. Mm-hmm. And also, having a deal here does not mean there really is a deal, as we will be finding out later in the programme. Yeah, well, when did we find out that we had a deal? Because there was lots of very loud whispers about it yesterday. The, from the EU side, though, yeah. wasn't it? It was and very it wasn't much finished, that... and it wasn't finished. That's right. And then late last night, you know, it seemed like there might be a deal, and then just before the 10 o'clock news last night, the DUP were like, uh-uh, there's still gaps here. And then early this morning, literally we were just getting on the Eurostar to come here to Brussels and it all seemed like oh it's there the choreography was all in place you knew that the agenda the EU was all set out they could even agree it before lunchtime which always always seemed a bit ambitious of course to seven text message from someone in the DUP saying we're still not there and it seemed like it might all be off because surely Boris Johnson wouldn't sign up to anything without knowing that he had the MPs votes on board Except that... It wasn't the case, because yeah. then we got a tweet from Jean-Claude Juncker, president of the European Commission, the sort of person who announces these things. And then it was, so, EU flag emoji, shaking hands emoji, Union Jack emoji. You can see where this is going. <laughs> um, where there is a will, there is a deal. Mm, mm-hmm. not, doesn't quite rhyme, but never mind. <laughs> we have better. one, he said. It's a fair and balanced agreement for the EU and the UK, and it's testament to our commitment to find solutions. I recommend that UCO... EU leaders endorses this deal and then a little picture of the letter in a way that you actually just couldn't read the text so we didn't know what it said initially that not being able to read it might actually be better for some people uh, yeah <laughs> but it was a real moment wasn't it I mean we just got t- to you know me and my colleagues from Westminster we'd just arrived here and I was just like running along there with my stuff going oh we've got to get organized and literally my phone beeped and went deal done <gasps> which Really, at that moment, you know, every now and again, you think you get a message or a call or something that says, ah, everything's about to change. And it really, it really has, although also hasn't. Yeah. But look, getting to this point is a real moment in what's been a very long, long, arduous process. It, even since last week's yeah. Brexit cast, yeah. really. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think there has been over the last eight days or so a real change. Um, And I think, you know, on the EU side, they felt that Boris Johnson's mind had changed, as if he felt now, yes, he'd been going through the motions of a deal, yes, he wanted a deal, but that it got to a point about a week ago where he said, I've got to throw everything at getting a deal because I do not want to request another extension. They felt it in there. The EU really squeezed him over that, and it meant that he made some very big concessions, but, of course, so has 
I mean, the EU's conceded too in this. And it's interesting, from the number 10 side, they think it was the meeting we talked about last week between Boris Johnson and Leo Varadkar at that country house in Cheshire. On the, the site way, on of the Colleen, Colleen Rooney's 21st. Colleen Rooney's 21st. Maybe she had a hand in it. Um, they think that, they believe that's when Leo Varadkar changed his mind and then that's when all the pressure built. So what's in the deal? Well, you know what we have to talk about before that? The fact oh. that, I have to mention again, we're at live which means people watching can get in touch with us live using the hashtag BrexitCast. Oh, and they okay. can ask us questions or they can make comments, which we can read out if, if they're nice. That also means, though, that we can't just talk on and on and on and on and on and cut it out later. Yeah, that means producer, that we have to shut up at a particular producer time. Producer Dino won't go around with the scissors taking right. out the bits where we make mistakes. OK, but I do think this is something we've got to talk about, is what of actually course, happened. So, I had a very good question from Simon Wadsworth, who sent us a tweet, just as you were suggesting, saying, Katia, where has the EU given ground and where has the UK given ground? Because they both have, right, to get to this point. They have. They have. Who do you want me to start with first? Start with the EU. <laughs> the EU. Well, don't we remember here in this very summit building when one EU leader after the other lined up uh, when there was the leadership uh, race to take Theresa yeah. May's job and said, just because you're going to get a new prime minister doesn't mean you're going to get a new Brexit deal. This is the withdrawal agreement. We ain't opening it. And then... They clearly did. They clearly did. They opened it. They are rewriting bits of it. So that was a concession. And I think, you know, when we have a look at, we keep talking about a new Brexit deal, a new Brexit deal. It's not really a new Brexit deal. It's about, you said about 95%, isn't it? I'd say maybe 965 but that's the German bit of me, maybe. Um, it's exactly <laughs> the, the, the same as Theresa May's deal. All this renegotiation was about that famous Irish backstop, which Boris Johnson said he wanted to bin. Do you think, though, both of you, we can call this a bin, what we've ended up with? Mm. It's different. It's really, really different. And it's different in particular because this is the jargon, but this is the bit that really matters for Brexiteers who might now vote for it, because also it is all in the, the politics of whether or not this can get through, and we'll come on to that later. So under this deal, all of the UK will be out of the EU customs union. Now, the bit in the deal that number 10 thinks is quite clever is that in practice on the ground, it will feel to lots of people do business in Northern Ireland that actually they are kind of still having to follow the rules of the customs union. And also, yeah. if you move house across the Irish Sea, your wardrobe and your fridge and your TV will not have tariffs applied to them because they're <laughs> an export from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. So you a can very important part. <laughs> very important. Got any plans to move. <laughs> so, you can move your, so you can move your stuff. But, yeah. I mean, these are about practicalities. But from a political point of view, as far as number 10 is concerned, the big thing they got was this acknowledgement that all of the UK can be out of the customs union, including Northern Ireland. But they know also they had to give they had to give too. Yeah, and then there was a bit of a bit of um, giving and taking and bantering and joshing when Jean-Claude Juncker hosted Boris Johnson at the European Commission where the negotiations had been taking place and they sort of shook on the deal. They had a little mini press conference where we all mm. shouted at them and it was all very exciting. Um, and there was a bit where uh, Boris Johnson made a joke about Jean-Claude Juncker being the boss. Uh, <laughs> Joe Claude's the boss here. Yeah. I do think that this deal uh, represents uh, a very good deal both for the EU and for the UK. And I hope very much now, speaking of elected representatives, that uh, my fellow MPs in, uh, in Westminster uh, do now uh, come together uh, to get uh, Brexit done, to get this excellent deal over the line and to deliver Brexit without any more delay handshake moment which everyone said yeah Boris Johnson's gonna to have to get this handshake moment and it came maybe a bit later than people expected. Well it but was late and I wondered if they'd like sloped off for a little celebratory lunch maybe <laughs> for a few little cheeky somethings before coming out they uh, both look happy but they both look knackered. knackered. Yeah so I was thinking everyone looked very yeah. knackered but I, I, I think it's important not to, to just say, you know, Boris Johnson got, got what he wanted, mm. which is that Northern Ireland leaves the EU's customs union along with the rest of the UK. He also did not get something else. He, 
you know, I think at the, at the time with um, Theresa May's deal, um, and because the, don't forget the original proposal from the EU was to have a Northern Ireland only backstop. And then there was this idea that no, that can't happen because we can't have Northern Ireland being treated differently to the rest of the UK. That is that is exactly what has now happened. Um, and, and I think you can't really get away from that. So of sure. course he can talk about the legal stuff. The EU can also say it got its red lines respected, which is safeguarding the single market and uh, the Northern Ireland peace process on the island of Ireland after Brexit. So I think both sides can go away holding that. But I think you cannot get away from the fact that Boris Johnson made massive concessions over that. And of course, the DUP is more yeah, than aware of sure. that. Sure. And that's what is going to make it difficult for him to get it through Parliament. I mean, one of the senior Brexiteer Tory MPs who's been in and out of Downing Street all week, been involved in the conversations about, could you accept this? Could you not? said to me a couple of days ago, look, Boris Johnson has broken his promise to us that the withdrawal agreement was dead, right? That has not happened, as exactly as we've been saying. He's accepted nearly everything from Theresa May's deal. And that really matters. He's accepted the fact that there will be really quite different arrangements for Northern Ireland. And, and they could be permanent. Right, and they could be permanent. And that's what makes it so tough to get it through Parliament. I, I, and I'm glad you said that, because for me... Intellectually, uh, I think that's oh, sort of the biggest Adam, thing I of this. Know you always thought that way. Yeah, only this late at night. Um, <laughs> Is that what you do, really uh, late? <laughs> The, the, do you remember the backstop in the old days was unless and until something better comes along. We spent a year watching Theresa May trying to show just how temporary it was going to be and how it was OK, you could live with it because it wasn't going to be forever. We're now in a situation where the backstop will be permanent if that's what the people of Northern Ireland want. And I know that might not sound like a massive change, but it really just changes how the whole thing feels and looks. It and it's, it's like taking a, a problem and looking at it a completely different yeah, way. Yeah, and it's a big new concept, I think, that both... Both sides have been at pains to point out today is this idea of giving the Stormont Assembly, the Northern Irish Assembly, which of course is not sitting at the yes. moment, it's but not. this idea of consent is a new concept and that's what's changed the dial in, in, in this place. But should we say where we are? Because oh. because this is a bit weird, because if, if you don't know where we sure. are, you might have seen me or Katia or you standing like somewhere in here being on the news. But late at night, it's Catcher, just a bit like this being in an aircraft is... hangar. Justice Lipsius. And the name of this... Justice Lipsius. Is that your new Trust cosmetics line? Trust in me. <laughs> Trust in me. That's Lipsius. what we're going to do after Brexit. Yeah, it comes okay. in <laughs> mode. Um, <laughs> yes, the yes. first eyeliner will be Max Fac. Okay. After oh. that, we're on to is an new old Mexican joke. Mm. Mm. Anyway, right, no. so this is the Justice Lipsius. It is not a cosmetic shop. It is where the EU summits are held and have been for ages. We've spent zillions of hours here, but if we you have. haven't spent zillions of hours here, this is what it is like to actually spend zillions of hours here. Yes. Right, this is what the Justice Lipsius press room looks like at peak press time in the middle of the day. Loads of journalists. Up here is what I like to call the balcony of fame, because it's where all the top TV journalists do their broadcasting. Oh, it's only Hugh Edwards, not that famous. Security is really tight here, which means going in and out is a total faff, which means that smokers are confined to this see-through smoking prison. <laughs> Michelle, congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, oh, good to see you. Congratulations. Is it finally time for the champagne? Finally. Außerdem haben wir so here is the press conference. The guy in the grey suit is prepping to talk to the spokesman. Then there's Michel Barnier, obviously. Then the Tishon Clay of Radker. Then Donald Tusk. And then JCJ. Right. I am absolutely gasping, but luckily this is the Austrian bar, so-called because the Austrians paid to have it refurbished. Can I have a beer, please? No. 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 Oh, they don't serve till seven. And finally, the press conferences, which happen at the end of every day. Boris Johnson's is happening down there right now. In here will be... Emmanuel Macron. Do you think we're allowed to go and see what it's like to be Emmanuel Macron? No. Oh. 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 Let's spoil sports. <laughs> <laughs> is Catcher, you are so naughty. Is is French for spoil sport? The spoil sport, by any it, chance? It is what? now. What more happened? exciting, more what? exciting. What we spotted. But, oh, oh yeah, because the other feature you didn't talk about, and that is very often late at night. Yes. 
people are asleep. Yeah. And we've spotted and a snorer. We've, we've, we've spotted, spotted someone who was asleep. And, and I, feel, I feel a bit bad about this, but someone who's helping us out tonight is taking a picture of someone who's asleep. Do we feel bad about it? Is this against It's all right, it's unrecognizable. Is this against the GDPR? Well, I don't know. I mean, you can't really see who it is. Oh, I'll yeah, show it okay, quickly. Do that, and that's bad, but we don't, we don't know who it is. For people, because they're long, 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 long. Oh, hours. I think I recognize who that is. Oh, in don't the say of, who it is. In the that's interest mean. of balance, someone over there was doing sit ups a minute ago. So you've got the sleepers -ups. and the exercisers. Anyway. Wow. Right, okay. Wow. You know, I said people should send in some questions, and we basically ignored them. No, no, that's not true. We've done Simon Woodsworth's question. Okay, well, here's a question from yes. Julian Murray. Yes. And it's about the domestic situation now uh -huh. that the deal is heading back to Westminster to be voted on on Saturday. Right. Yeah. Given the DUP are clearly not going to support this new deal, mm -hmm. how likely is it that Boris has curated this deal, that's a good Instagrammy word, isn't it, as a platform to justify no deal? So in other words, it's, it was that, so it's designed to fail almost? Is no. that what they're getting at? I think there'll be a lot of suspicion of that. I genuinely do not think that that is the case. I was talking to someone very senior in government tonight, um, and it reminds me a lot of some, actually some of the conversations that I've had over the last few months with people around Boris Johnson, who've always said, we really, really, really want to get a deal, but we think it's very unlikely, and therefore, we're absolutely prepared to leave without a deal because their number one on the list has always been leaving on time, leaving yeah. at the end of this month at Halloween, which we might touch on in just a second. Um, but the problem with that is the way this deal has been constructed. It is not going to get the DUP on board. Why does that matter? Because they've got 10 votes in Parliament. Boris Johnson doesn't have his own majority. And it's not just the DUP have got 10 bums on seats, but they're seen, they're kind of a totem for Brexiteers. Like, if the DUP doesn't back However, it... However, I was thinking some, about this. Yeah. Hasn't Boris Johnson cleverly broken that link between the DUP and the Brexiteers? Because in the past, the Brexiteers said, where the DUP go, we will go with them. But now you've got loads of Brexiteers saying, actually, this future trade agreement for Great Britain, mm -hmm. which has got much less level playing field stuff, mm -hmm. like following environmental yeah. rules, is and much also, more attractive to them. And yeah. isn't there the risk also that um, if Brexiteers don't vote for this deal, or at least Brexiteers in the Conservative Party, they yeah. may head to a general election and lose votes to the Brexit yeah. Party. And those are all the things that are motivating Brexiteers to be much more likely to vote for it this time. And mainly it's because the backstop's gone, right? And the backstop was this symbol. But there is no way, it seems tonight, that the DUP is coming on board. I mean, just listen to how, actually, how angry Nigel Dodds, who's their Westminster leader, sounded a bit earlier today. I think that the Ban Act has forced Boris Johnson into somewhat of desperation measures. In order to avoid trying to get an extension, he has been too eager by far to get a deal at any cost. And uh, the fact of the matter is that if he held his nerve and held out, he would, of course, got yeah. better concessions, which kept the integrity, both economic and constitutional, of the United Kingdom. Even Arlene Foster's top lip looked angry there, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. But also, I take issue with that. I don't think that by, you know, holding out, by not making those concessions, that Boris Johnson would have got more from the EU. I, I don't, because I think, you know, if we go back again to what everybody wanted at least to get out of this deal, the, the EU was going to stick to this, that it wanted to protect the single market as much as possible mm. and protect the Northern Ireland peace process. And the way the proposals that Boris Johnson came here with just did not do that for the EU. And yes, they've always got give and they've always got something up their sleeve, but there are limits. I mean, they don't concede when it's actually to their disadvantage. So you think this is as far as they could go ever? Because it was interesting today, it was one of the questions, wasn't it, that we asked Michelle Barnier, is like, could you go, could you go any further? And he looked a bit hacked off to be asked the question. He just said, why, why are you asking a question that isn't for now? That's just hypothetical. But the interesting thing is I, I can't see a way that the DUP is going to budge in the next few days. And that means when it comes to the vote in Parliament on Saturday in less than 48 hours now, if I'm counting correctly, is it still 48 hours till Saturday? Yeah. Think, but, think so? Something yeah. like that? Ish. It's <laughs> going to be achingly tight. Right? It's going to be achingly tight. And it's a very real possibility that Boris Johnson will lose this vote. I mean, for what it's worth, there's all sorts of number crunching out tonight. The FT, the Financial Times, is, has put the numbers at 318 for and 321 against. <sighs> 
I mean, that's Brexit is delayed or doesn't happen. Doesn't I, I think I, or, or I mean, oops. those leaders know that. Right? Yeah. And I thought, you know, and the number bod- 10 knows it. The they body really language know. was so interesting today because it was like back slapping and, you know, bonhomie and here we go and we're all mates, we've done this deal. But it's not real. I mean, it's not real. Those EU leaders are just thinking when Boris Johnson said, I've got the numbers, they were thinking, really? Have you really got the numbers? But they're not panicking because they do have that Brexit extension up their sleeve if the UK requests one. And even though they don't like the idea of another extension, and EU leaders were very coy at the summit oh, about yeah. the idea of a Brexit extension, um, but that's because they want to keep the pressure up on MPs, focus their minds and say, listen, we're not going to just go on and on and on with this forever. But if they were asked they would say yes. And there was one person who wasn't coy about it, or certainly not as coy. And he isn't a leader of a country. It's Jean-Claude Juncker, president of the European Commission. So he's a a very visible, sort Mm -hmm. of influential-ish person, but he doesn't actually have a vote. Call him an influencer in the 21st century, right? Yes. In 2019. I don't know if he's on Insta. Uh, You know, he's got... it's something you'll do when he retires. No, he's got an old Nokia that doesn't even send picture messages. I've tried. Have you? I've tried. Oh. No, I don't have the number. I don't have the number. Anyway, <laughs> but, but he, he would influence the decision, but he wouldn't actually make the decision. And when yeah. he was asked about it on the red carpet today, yeah. have a little look at how... Well, just have a look. <laughs> we don't think that it's possible to give another prorogation. There will be so no other pro- prorogation. I'm speaking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There will be no other prorogation. You are saying... Sorry, are you going to rule out an extension? That's what I was saying. Right. So you're actually going to say officially that you will rule out an extension? Yes. To Article 50. We have a deal, so why should we have a prorogation? So I was one of the people in meaning that. extension. Should we well, not translate? So yeah. I, I was one of the people in that scrum, and I'd asked him, and, and, he, and, and we asked him a few times, and he said, well, what happens if he fails? He said, I'm not in charge of the parliament in Westminster. I said, but if it fails, and he said, it has to pass, it has to. I said, but what happens then? And he said, there cannot be a prolongation. And I thought, what Pro- prolongation? This is a new word for the Brexit lexicon, yeah. prolongation. But this is but the man who delay. talks about an erotic attachment to the backstop. So. Well, or lack of. Or lack go. of, yes, that he doesn't have an erotic Something attachment. Something he's given up. But, but the interesting thing is, right, so he, just to be really clear, it will not be his decision. It is not legally it's his decision yeah, it's at all. It decision. is the leaders of the national That's why I said leaders he was an of the 27 influencer. Not a but it's fascinating because I know, I think we've talked about it on Bexicast before, at least for the last three, four weeks, Number 10 has been saying, look, we really, really, really want to get a deal. And by the way, if we get a deal, please, 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 will you say with a message to Parliament in Westminster that it's this or nothing, there won't be a delay. Now, as you suggest, there's no way that the EU Council is officially going to say you can never ever have an extension. But some of the big players here have played ball with that idea a bit. And um, Betel, the Luxembourgish leader who showed you around his small rooms small, not so long very ago small, very small. Um, on the empty lectern gate, there will be so many gates here through Brexit. Um, even he said today, one of those people who always says, I'm so sad about Brexit, it's so terrible. He said today, this is not about whether you think Brexit is a good thing or a bad thing, whether you're against it or for it. This is about leaving with a deal or leaving with no deal. So officially, of course, they're not saying they wouldn't give a delay, and as we know, they would. But they're, they're playing Boris Johnson's they're trying game to help. a bit, right? Well, they're trying to help him, as they've always said, and they said to Theresa May as well. Yeah. If you sign up to a deal with us that respects our red lines, we will help you sell it however you like. And so, I mean, this is gentle help, if you like, but at the end of the day, they will say yes to an extension. And Angela Merkel was kind of intimated that in her press conference as well, because she has to justify this to her public back home. She's not shutting the door on the United Kingdom. Someone's laughing really loudly over there, which makes me think they're listening to us on a delay, and it was one of the funnier (laughs) bits, but... Right. uh, Either that or there's someone in this building who's telling better jokes than us. That's quite likely. (laughs) Where are they? Um, <laughs> Let's get them on. Let's find right, them. Yeah, exactly. Find them in the last 10 minutes of the programme. Which one of us are they going to replace? Can I just point out, you know, we could be back here in a very short amount of time yeah. if there is a request for an extension, like yeah. sitting this here together some, again. This is already summit number 14. Much as I of love Brexit, of seeing Brexit. you two in the flesh. Yeah. But yeah. darling, darling, Laura, after that comes trade agreements. Well, All the rest of it, this is going to go on and on. Justin and Byrne, line. Justin right. Byrne, 42, says, OMG, I've just realised tonight could be the last Brexit cast ever. No. Oh, no. Do you know that we don't? Is, no. Um, no. Oh, here we go. No. I'm rushing base. out to register the podcast name Trade Deal Cast. 
deal cast. Deal cast. Deal cast. No, that better, doesn't. Isn't it? That doesn't. It scan. Sounds, that sounds doesn't like a bit scan. like an engineering company that casts up widgets or something. Um, deal cast. I prefer Justice Lipsius um, cast. Colin Fox says, yeah. "Who's buying the first round after Brexit cast? Surely it must be at BBC Catch at Adler." Oh. Yeah, because this is your town. <laughs> this is your town, though, isn't it? I mean, this is your town, I think it's that's about head. right. No, yeah. This is okay. your head. Right. Um, James says, what is Boris Johnson going to do if he loses the vote on Saturday? Right. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure, and don't all scream at me, and if you're somebody who studied the Ben Act in detail, please don't scream at me, I think he's still going to try to avoid a delay. Now, we know that Parliament has voted to change the law to force him to ask for the extension that we've just been talking about. But I'm pretty sure that Number 10 is going to, alongside that letter, to comply with the law, saying, I have to ask for an extension, I'm pretty sure they're still going to send a second letter, but a second political letter that says, yes, I have to ask for a delay, but I don't think that it's a good idea. And, oh, dear EU, we have a deal all together. What I want to do is get everybody to vote for our deal and I don't want to negotiate anymore. And I think also he'll try and get into a general election ASAP. And now there's a deal, he could go to the country saying, OK, I might have had to do a delay because those pesky MPs have made me do it, but there's a deal here ready to be done. Vote Conservative, vote for me, give me a majority and this nightmare can be over. Whether that works, of course. I mean, blimey, you know, high stakes, high gamble. Lots of people deplore this deal and still hate the fact it's happening at all. And, and I think basically for the, for the EU, they're going to say, um, if he doesn't have the numbers in Parliament, if he wants to go to a general election, could this general election end up with another referendum? Or could we end up having a referendum on this deal? You know, for the EU, all of those questions are open. But what I want to underline, because you still, you still get asked about it, are they waiting for Brexit to be overturned? They are not waiting anymore to, for Brexit to be overturned. Although, yeah, although right. Donald Tusk did say, I'll be the chief Remainer forever. Forever, yes. But he, but he also said, I'm sad because the UK is leaving. He didn't say any more, except if people change so their that's minds. That's really interesting. So in government now, they believe, rightly or wrongly, but they absolutely agree with what you've just said. So they believe that finally, as they would see it, France, Germany, the Commission and Ireland have given up on the idea of this being halted. And of course, for the Conservative government, that's really important because fairly or unfairly there was this sense all along that when they came to Brussels there was this sort of secret thing that actually if only, if only, if only we talked about it so many times haven't we the diplomats would say oh do you think that do you think that the UK might actually change his mind but the irony of that of course is it's just at a time when it looks like a push for another referendum might possibly actually have the numbers in Parliament. I mean, it's so... This is all like whack-a-mole, isn't it? You yeah. know, something goes down one side, it comes up down the other. Right, we're going to have one last question, and oh, it's from good. an actual person who sent in a video. As an part actual of person? Stephen, well, they were all actual people, but this is a person we're going Not to see because they sent in a video because they're doing oh, this good. show with Stephen Nolan called The Top Table on BBC Three on Monday, which okay. is loads of questions from around the UK about Brexit. Amazing. Hi, my name's Kirsty, and I'm a Brexit cast fan from Inverness. My question is for Adam. And it's who is the biggest diva in the Brexit cast team? <laughs> Adam. It's Adam. Adam. It's Adam. It's Adam. <laughs> who said that? It was Dina the up, producer. When we come that. up with our new makeup line, we promise you a whole new makeover. Oh, thanks. You do night, I'll do morning, I'll do daytime. Last week you said I had the, the body shape of a six month old baby. <laughs> Because you've got such beautiful skin, like a baby's bottom. It is you. <laughs> right, OK. It is you. <laughs> moving on, moving Just on, moving own on. It. Own it. Ronnie own says, it. Ronnie says... <laughs> Thank you for that question. <laughs> please, please, please broadcast on Super Saturday, which, of course, is the big vote on Saturday. I are we going to? We I, are going to broadcast, of course, emergency Brexit cast. I think we can broadcast on Saturday. Yeah. Because it won't be the klaxon anymore. As someone in the government said to me, you don't need a klaxon now, you need a foghorn. Foghorn Saturday. Kong. Yeah, so we'll be on on Super Saturday. You'll be able to listen to us on BBC Sounds and we'll be back on TV very soon. Thanks Bye, everyone. for watching. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us. Brexit cast. Brexit cast. From the BBC.